Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program 2 video. Well, as we all know, Kerbal Space Program is a buggy early access game right now. So making videos concerning Kerbal Space Program 2 or building things or ma making missions is an extreme challenge, not from the building aspect of things, but more of the bugginess of the game, making it unplayable and certain ways, where something as easy as going into orbit can take several hours due to bugs, constantly destroying everything in your path. During these, during these past two weeks, I've been able to record enough, I believe, for at least three more videos. One about the Kraken Drive that was discovered through the rapiers, a large spaceship to the moon, and a few other things. Mind you, almost none of them went to completion because of the constant bugs. But I'll still make a video of them because it's fun to watch. And for today, I finally managed to get a 36 ton payload to orbit using a medium sized rocket SSTO. And let me tell you, it was a fucking, fucking journey. journey. Someone in my comments mentioned that the girder segment or cubic octagonal strut or what passes for one in Kerbal Space Program 2 was the reason for my medium sized SSTOs to just fall apart, literally disintegrate or melt, just being loaded up on the runway. After that revelation, I tried removing all of that, and sure enough, it worked. Almost the first try, I was able to get up into orbit using a rocket, medium sized rocket SSTO, but as soon as I undocked the 36 ton payload from the cargo hold, it bugged out on me, claiming that the craft was, was at a total loss, even though it was not even damaged. But what are you gonna do, right? Early access here. Early access, people. So I went back, changed up a few things, and then from that point on, it would just break. The craft would just continuously break. Every time it got loaded up, it would just break. Something would break. The wheels would break, the wings would break, it would just break. This, of course, makes no sense, because it worked just fine the first time. Well, after putting struts in key locations, I then minimized the weight of the wings. Maybe the wings were too big and KSP-2 just didn't like that and it would break. So I made them smaller and less heavy. I attached the back wheels to the body frame, to both body frames, and just slid them over to the side so that nothing was on the wings other than the wing attached to the structural fuselage. That seemed to work. Changed the uh, spring strength and dampening strength. Cranked them up to 11 on all the wheels, keep it from bouncing. Finally, I managed to get it to take off again, only to realize that at this point, I was running out of fuel. So I went back, slapped on some more fuel tanks, tried again, barely, just barely made it. Okay, more fuel, slapped on some more fuel tanks, tried again, and finally, this time, this time it worked. I was able to get into orbit with 36 ton of payload. Now I had learned my lessons, from the buggy docking ports, so I replaced the docking ports with a decoupler. It seemed to work just fine. I'll be a, a little, I'll be a, just a little bit unruly. So I said, huh, okay, there it goes. But then I started noticing the camera drifting off all by itself for some messed up weird reason. Matt Lown, Scott Manley, they've all had this problem and I've just finally discovered it. It seems that the camera tries to keep both objects within some sort of camera frame which is really dumb. But at the same time, early access. Remember, early access. They haven't worked out all the bugs. This is something I would consider as a bug. Once they iron it out, then they can have the camera just focus on one thing or the other. Now, I forgot to mention that if something like that happens where you get the flight report saying that your ship was destroyed, when in reality your ship is just fine, close out the report and double click on your craft. That allows you to have control of your craft again. Now, the report's still important because it's telling you that some part fucked up, but if it's a part you can do without or you can work around, then that's fine. Sadly, in my case, it was the wing breaking off of the fuselage, and so that wasn't all that great. I, even if I could, even when going back and trying to control the craft, it, it, wasn't, it just wasn't. It was done. Well, back to the camera problem. I finally somehow through switching through the different camera modes with the V key, was able to at least keep the camera up somewhat close to the vehicle. During its weird, fucked up descent, I had lost all control when it came to pitching the nose up or down. I could turn left and right. I could, I could yaw left and right just fine. But there was no roll, there was no roll, and there was no pitch. I thought, well, maybe maybe this is a 
reaction wheel problem, although that didn't make any sense whatsoever. So as soon as I entered the atmosphere, I figured, okay, well, as soon as I get into the atmosphere and the wings start interacting with the atmosphere, then I can get my pitch and I can get my roll back. That wasn't the case. The only thing that worked was yaw. Pitch and roll completely did not register. Even if the craft was completely out of control, it should still start pitching and yawing, or pitching and rolling at least. But this wasn't even the case either. It was as if, it was as if the game had completely forgotten what pitch and roll was, and all it did was yaw back and forth. Now before someone says, oh, you were, you were in a flat spin, I wasn't spinning at all. I had control when it came to yaw, but I had no control when it came to pitch or roll. And to be honest, I don't even think at that point in time, the game knew what pitch and roll was. Because when I turned off SAS completely, it wouldn't pitch and it wouldn't roll. And I know for a fact that there's no damn way that that craft is so damn stable that it wouldn't at least teeter a little bit. But in this case, it didn't do it at all. What this tells me is that we are looking at a bug. Some sort of bug that locks the pitch and the roll in whatever position that the craft is at that point in time. Some weird atmospheric modeling bug of some kind. I mean, I even tried to save, go back out of the game, go back in the game, even go as far as actually turning off the computer completely, waiting a little while, booting it back up, booting the game back up, and I'd still get the same problem. So it's probably more of a part thing, like some sort of part mechanics is goofing up where it locks the pitch and the roll. But I don't know. But Veos, why are you using a rocket SSTO? Why not ones that are powered by the rapier? Well, right now, I'm not very familiar with the drag models for the parts in KSP2. I'm not sure if the rapier has more or less drag than KSP1, if the whole putting an aerodynamic nose cone behind the rapier and bringing it in helps with drag or maybe it doesn't anymore, what kind of drag the wings have. All this jazz is still new, still very buggy. And so for now, instead of worrying about making the SSTO as super drag efficient as possible without really knowing if any of the parts are even capable of being that kind of drag efficient at this point in time, I've opted to go full on rocket SSTO. A rocket SSTO is extremely easy to fly. You still have to worry about making it aerodynamic, but fine tuning it to become almost dragless, you don't have to really worry about because it's not going to stay in atmosphere that long. You're going to cut through the thicker, thicker part of the atmosphere by pointing to about 40 degrees, then you're going to find that sweet spot to initiate your gravity turn by hitting prograde. For this vehicle, it was about 19,000 meters. I hit prograde and it started its gravity turn. And then you just get to about 70,000 apoapsis. Wait till you get there, burn into orbit, boom, done. Plus it looks pretty cool too. I love rocket SSTOs. When the game gets more ironed out and we start understanding more about the drag models and coefficient and all that good shit about the parts and whatever, and then I'll start, yeah, I'll start getting into the rapiers again or even jet engines plus rockets, you know, the whole stuff. But for now, rocket SSTOs STOs are going to be a thing. But anyway, yeah, so the craft belly flopped with a buggy camera and buggy physics, part physics or whatever you want to call it, that locked the pitch and the roll in place. Now I did watch Shadow Zone, one of his videos where he was talking to one of the devs and they're working on all this stuff. So it's going to be only a matter of time before it's all ironed out. One of the things that the dev was talking about was, I guess, rendering speeds or something of that, of that nature where, where they're aiming for like a smooth playthrough at about 150 parts to go to the moon. What is the number of parts you need to make a vehicle that can land on the moon? Is it is it some arbitrary number of parts? Is it uh, 100? Like the one we often test with internally is a 150 part vessel. And that's good. That's really good because many of us, and I know many of us, build crafts that are way past 150 parts while going to the moon. I mean, I know I do. I can easily build a two, 300 part VTOL SSTO that goes to the moon with cargo and have several of them there easily without even trying. So 150 parts for me, even though I'm very part count savvy, would be very limiting in ability and creativity. It could be done but it wouldn't be as interesting or as cool. Now I realize that building things like this in KSP2 would be a little easier because of the procedural wings with less part count, which by the way, can somebody please petition to have fuel added to the wings? Let's make like a Veos army petition. <laughs> don't listen to me, I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, yeah. So good things coming, hopefully soon, but I'd rather the devs take their time to iron this out. I'll be working on trying to find out more about what parts are buggy and what parts are unplayable, what parts you should 
should avoid, all while working on a rocket SSTO fleet where I can actually start building space stations, which will be tricky because of the whole nuclear explosive docking ports. But hey, Carnassa's doing it, so it's gotta work, right? But anyway, thank you so much for coming and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like. And if you really liked what you saw, consider subscribing and clicking on that bell notification so you get updates as well as community posts. I post a lot of community posts to give everyone updates on what's going on. Sorry again for being a little slow coming out with the videos. In real life, it's it's been a little rough, but that's anywhere these days. Although I hear the Netherlands is nice this type of year. If I sound nasally, that's because I think I'm coming down with something. Probably worked myself a little too hard. We also have a membership if you're interested. Get cool little emojis and badges and whatnot. But thank you again for being here and watching the video with your love and support. Appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Love you all. Take care, and I'll see you in the next KSP2 video. And if you're asking about live streams, don't worry about that. We'll get them back on track soon. I'll still be doing KSP1 stuff here eventually. But until then, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.